Yeah, the margin's even six gold, actually. If there's six, it's supposed to be okay. I don't know if I'm a believer that, you know, that it's a generic meaning for everybody. But supposedly we're very well within the margin now. But we went from 16 to two, and two as of today. So I think, you know, whatever that means, and you believe in that stuff, so what do you think? Do you believe in it, Brian? I do, I do. I think that when you look at those things, <coughs> when the party that has the White House does well in the midterms, it's because of two things. Right. And those, uh, those well, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I have good numbers. A lot of our people have good numbers. We're losing a lot of people. Uh, Pete, maybe you could talk about that a little bit, just to the because this is a different group. Mr. President, thank you very much. And let me say to everybody here, thank you. We win when we are together. We win when we gather ourselves together around a common theme, and that is the President of the United States that wants to make America great again. It's the common denominator for every single member of Congress. And Mr. President, thank you for your leadership. We are losing some 40 members of Congress who have chosen one way or another to leave. And when you go replacing 40 people, I was chairman of the National Republican Congressional Committee in 2010 when we won back. We won 63 net seats, 89 new members of Congress. And so what happens is these members have other interests. They want to run for governor. They want to go back home and do something else. And as that happens, it means it's more expensive and people make mistakes. They're not as good as the game. That is the, probably the intrinsic value of why we're a little worried at this point. We've got to get back a little bit of momentum. The president's going to talk about it in a minute. But the, the speaker and some fluctuations that we're having there. We are going to win. We're going to win because of what we've done. This president is going to lead us back to that, but we cannot do it without you and your attributes that you bring to the table. Thank you very much. Thanks. You've done a great job. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. Ronna? Thank you, Mr. President. I, I want to echo what Pete's saying. Um, first of all, the president has changed our country. It's been transformational. I've been in six states in five days. I see people every day saying my wages are up. I'm, I, my, I have job. I have job. I feel so much better about my life because of this president. We have to support him. Uh, and the RNC announced today we've raised a record number of money, the most we've ever raised, thanks to the president, 171 million, and thanks to all of you. Thank you so much for your support. That means we're already in 25 states. We're building out our ground game. We've trained 11,000 volunteers. We've put the best, to, together the best ground game we've ever put in place for a midterm because we know the Democrats are energized. They want to take it back. They want to do everything they can to obstruct and resist. They have no message. Uh, we know what they will do to our country. They will turn back the clock to the dark ages of Schumer and Pelosi. And we cannot let that happen. And so this isn't an election where I say we, we want to win or we can win. We must win. And I think we can. And the media is doing the same thing they did to President Trump. They, they said Hillary Clinton was gonna win. They wanna put that message out there. They wanna say the midterms are gonna be a blue wave. Well, there's, a, there's another wave that's crashing and that's our economy. And I think that that will win in the hearts and minds of voters, but only if we all engage. So thank you so much for being here, being part of the team. We're gonna need you for success this November. And you're feeling pretty good about things? I do, I feel good. We're in the battleground states. Uh, we're seeing the president's numbers very strong. We also have seen tax reform initially. It was upside down in a lot of our battleground states. We now see it upright, upside uh, on the right side um, across all of our battleground districts. You know, the media was so negative. It was going to be Armageddon and crumbs and all these things. And now people are feeling it. Uh, Two-thirds of Americans have bigger paychecks. Uh, 4.2 million have seen higher wages or 401k increases, things that have... Uh, dramatically benefited their lives. So they feel good about Republican leadership. They feel like we're on the right path. But it's gonna be a battle. Democrats are turning out at a higher level. We've seen that in these specials. Uh, they are engaging. They know that they want it back. So we have to match that. So we effort. have a big race on Tuesday. We have a big race Tuesday. In Arizona. Yes. We have the one race, right? Just we do. Debbie Let's go. How is that looking? Can you imagine, uh, by the way, was he a nice guy or what? Mr. Nice <coughs> guy. Christian, a very dear friend, and that things get twisted in your life. What I will tell you is, we're going to win. We're going to win, and it's going to be close. I think the chairwoman said it best. 
the other side is coming to the table. But I'm hearing that she, he's got, she's got, our person, Lesko, has a reasonable lead with all the ballots, a lot of ballots have been. Yes, so. I mean, so we have, what, 20% will be on election day, right? So we have 69, I mean, this is in this room. We, our, our last count had 69,000 ballots in for Lesko. It's a 75% absentee return district. So most of the voting is going to take place before really election unusual, day. It's it? really yeah. unusual. So, like so of are you thinking that she's leading? She is leading. It's, it's, it's a slim lead. We have heard about between four and five. Uh, we have McSally going into the district tomorrow. I talked to the state party chair today. The energy is very, very high. Tipperini's had a lot of money coming in. The Democrat, she's a doctor. Interestingly enough, she has all of her commercials where she's in her scrubs. She uh, hasn't practiced medicine for 11 years because of a malpractice suit. Uh, so she's just presenting herself. And, and they have this education battle happening right now in Arizona with the governor. So that's, that's a, become a big issue in this primary. So. Um, what do you think? So Tuesday is the election. Tuesday is the election day. I think we are winning. Do we generally more Republicans or Democrats show up? Generally more Republicans. It's a Republican district, uh, but I think that we've put a good ground game together. We've been leading in the absentee. Has Lesko been a good candidate? She is a good candidate. She's working hard. I talked to the state party chair today. I said I want to hear that she's working hard. And we've got uh, the governor in there. We've got McSally in there. We've got people going in and campaigning with her tomorrow, and this big weekend push. So it's, it's, we have a real good shot. We have a good shot. I'm, I'm, if we win it, will it be a big deal? Or we're going to make it a big deal. The, na the national media if will you say. Lose it, it's going to be a monster. <laughs> if you lose it, it's big. If you win it, it'll be another. Oh, wow. Another thing. Yeah. Another if you thing. win it, they'll say she didn't win by as much as we thought she should have. That's what they'll say. Uh, you already know about the 2016. I will talk a little bit about the secret weapon, the Hindu American vote. If you were to engage in 2018, the same way you engaged in 2016, we have 2.1 million Hindu American voters. Hindu, Hindu American voters. The, you know, we talked about the rally last time at Diwali. We're we planning want to put a rally. rally. We were planning a rally for you, the 50,000. We just met uh, Justin Clark, a great, great. great you know, you are planning. Yes. yes, we are planning. Because they had a rally for me in Newark, New Jersey. I guess 18,000, 19,000. No, we have 50,000. 50. Yeah. It was an unbelievable wow. rally. He was a very rich man. He gave a million dollars, which is peanuts to him. <laughs> he gave a million dollars. More importantly, he, uh, I mean, we had a rally that was phenomenal. Yeah. So this time we have 50,000. And also the important factor here is that there are states and districts which you will normally, normal logic, normal issue, you will think that they are going to Either we're going to Republican, uh, the Republicans are going to lose, or Democrats are going to keep. But if you were to engage, there will be there are at least three Senate seats, and there are at least twelve congressional seats we could win. So if you were at your level of engagement, what Senate seats are you talking about? Pennsylvania. Oh, you think really? Okay. Absolutely. Pennsylvania, we have eighty thousand Hindu American voters. I mean, you know, just look at this the engagement side. Rick Sacon, and you went there twice, right, or one time, for that district. You lost by 641. We got him up 11,000 11, votes in one day, but it wasn't, he lost by 300 votes. Right, so you 249 lost. 249 votes. That's Can right. you believe it? Out of 250, 215,000. Okay. lost by 300 votes. One more call for me. Would have back in 2000. So, yeah, well, you would have, you would have made it. So, are you saying about the 18 race, or no, are you talking about 18? Yeah. When are you going to have to run? 2018, rather than winning that's what their, uh, you know, Justin Clark has proposed around the 15th after the primaries. Yeah, I, I think we should do it. I mean, he, honestly, they gave a phenomenal thing in the Newark, the big arena. They so, had like 20,000 people, it was a love fest. What other yeah. states besides Pennsylvania? Basically, these are from India, these are people mostly mm -hmm. from India, right? That's all India. Yeah. It's all, would you say all well, Indian? Mostly, no. but there are people from Caribbean, they're from Fiji, from Africa, Hindus from, Hindus from all over, who love you. Yeah. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great night. People in India had like their Facebook photos of you. They were in love with you. You, you are like you were in India. Yeah. I mean, you have their pictures, yeah. pasted all over. Until I tell them they can't keep charging us 100% better. You know what I there goes a love fest. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I want to bring to you this issue. 
Um, so you know about DACA, you've had a, you've had a big hard work with DACA. Yes. So we have DACA kids, the legal dreamers. So these are about 200,000 kids. They come here legally with ultra high skills of parents, but they have a huge uh, backlog, heart problems, like 60 years sometimes, and they age out at 21 and they have 60 year backlog? Yes, they have stuff to support. Sounds like a long time. <laughs> 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 Why don't they just walk through the southern border? <laughs> yeah, there's no wall yet before the wall comes up. <laughs> in, in DACA, definition is you must be illegal. These are legal. So if you are legal, if you arrive here legally, you're not qualified. So it, it is. It's such a shame. So what, what we would actually, on the back of it, we we have proposed that we from you if you could, it, that can go a where long it, where, way. Yeah, where do you want the tweet? That's what they want to, Keith, they want to hear about dogs. Keith yeah, has been a very big supporter. You know. He has been working with me for a long time. Show me up, Mr. President, Charlie and I came to you together. I, I brought him to you. Originally? We to originally? Over a year ago, when I talked to you in March the 16th. So whenever you take care of dogs, I'll tell you, just don't leave dogs up <coughs> There are 200,000 from India, 100,000 from UK, Ireland, and so forth. So these kids came here at five years old, and because the system is so backlogged, they don't get the green card, they have to self-deport. Did you write this? Who wrote this? Yes, sir. Did, who's writing this? Actually? That's mine. Pretty good. Okay. Let me just say, let me see what I can do. <laughs> so there's other <laughs> American Tell me, let, me, let me hear about Syria. Yes, yes. yes. scream. You're definitely Thank in the news. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> from Syria. I'm Syrian American. I'm a cardiologist from Pennsylvania. Wow. I trained in Brooklyn, New York, Good. and I lived there for seven, eight years. Now I am I live in Pennsylvania, and I represent the Syrian American community in the United States. We are very pro Trump and very pro Republican, and I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of Syrian American. When did, when did you leave Syria? I left Syria in 1990. So way. Did you come over with your parents or something? Or? I actually, my two brothers, doctors, they were here, so I followed their steps, and then my parents came along. Too. You know, I was with the king of Saudi Arabia two months ago, and he said that Syria is one of the greatest cultures. You wouldn't know this. One of the greatest cultures on earth. He said before all of this horrible problem, he used to take his vacations in Syria. Mm -hmm. The people are the greatest professionals, accountants, doctors, this, that, everything. And I'm telling you, they spoke so highly of Syria. Well, Actually, uh, to entertain them, you know, the group here, the Syrian women were considered prize in the Middle East. So we would, in the summertime, we would get it. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not joking. They would get, they would get princes from Saudi Arabia, from the Gulf, who come to Syria specifically to choose girls because mostly was arranged marriage at this time and they would use they would choose girls and then they go to the parents and they try to you know get them engaged and take them to to Saudi Arabia so I'm here to thank you very much for your courageous act I uh, cannot tell you how much Syrian American are indebted to you so Assad is to you horrible Assad is very bad man. You maintained the red line, President Obama. Well, no, I broke the red line twice. Obama didn't. Yeah, you know, that's why. He made a thing. He, that's why we have the problem over there. If okay. he would have done, you wouldn't have Russia. You wouldn't have Iran. Exactly. We have that exactly. refugee problem. Exactly. 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 The Russians had a plan. The Chinese had a plan. The Iranians had a plan. America was without a plan. Without a plan. Without a plan. But when he didn't go over, as he said, the red line in the sand. That was a disaster. He basically yeah. moved yeah. Russia in. On every level. He, he gave Russia. Assad the right to kill people with impunity. But you know that Assad has been, uh, Obama gave Syria up two years ago, three years ago. Exactly. You know, people say, are you going to take Syria? I said, well, I don't think we need to send 250,000 soldiers in Saudi. Obama gave up Syria. True, very true. And he made a pink line, not red line. I am here specifically to tell you we are losing one billion dollars from Syria that we should use it on our troops rather than giving it to the middlemen who share it with the regime. There is production. Who, who are the middlemen? Who are the middlemen? I can give you the names. There is production of eighty thousand barrel of oil a day that gets sold to middlemen for ten dollars 
a barrel. Then the you mean that's the oil that we protect in, uh, in eastern of eastern, Ukraine. Yes. Eastern, yeah. Exactly. East, eastern where? Ukraine. There's yeah. a big river, eastern. They don't have a lot of oil, area. but they have oil. Mm -hmm. And I hear that it's just horrible what's going on. So the $1 billion is being shared by the middlemen and Assad regime. So we should really sanction those middlemen who are Syrian middlemen, and very low hanging fruit. And yet we're supposed to control that area. We control the area of military. Yeah, exactly. And you're saying Assad benefits by it? Yes, and Iran benefits. I'm not surprised. Under I, I our nose. Like Let's use it for our Well, give me information on that. I'll give you time. information. Because I, I talk about it all the time. I said, who's the money going to? The general says, sir, the money is going to the Syrian relief fund. I said, <laughs> the money that's being wasted by, you have the same thing in Libya. Yep. That oil is unbelievable oil. And, you know, they talk about, you know, I said, where's the money going to the Sir, we don't know. I said, you don't know, you don't know that thing. You don't know that thing. Sir, the middleman. The middleman. It's horrible. Honestly, it's horrible. Just the things bought, I see is this. Just bought a, a Four Seasons Hotel from well, uh, Prince Walid bin Talal because of the oil money that is being smuggled under our nose. It, is, it should be used for our troops. Yes. And the regime taking Why advantage. Why do you find out the information? You know, I would really like yes. to because, you know, we control that area. And my guys are always saying, well, sir, so we control it for the oil. I said, where's the money? No, they have no clue. The general, they're good fighters, but they're not into <laughs> money. We'll get that. Okay. Well, money. Maybe I can ask one more question. I kind of want to double down on that. So people, Syrian Americans, are loving President Trump. We definitely appreciate everything you've done. Uh, they have your pictures circled around and on Facebook with "We love you." I mean, this is so how they like the raid and they like they like it as an American as well. I you know think definitely that ISIS is is very dangerous for us. Not getting rid of Assad, though, it will definitely create another ISIS, and that's what we do not want. Um, I definitely encourage, and I think that's the feeling of the three hundred thousand Syrian Americans who live here, who now love you, and definitely they will support. You know, your party. How many live here? How many people? 300,000. I think it would be even more than that. Yeah. A lot of probably yeah. There's more. a lot in Michigan. I have but a lot of serious yeah. friends. Yeah. Yeah. But as a rerunning, or not re actually rerunning, but running for presidency, that would definitely be a, a very um, destructive thing because he was never elected and he is the magnet for ISIS. So under your leadership, we don't ever want to have an ISIS to But he's very much against ISIS, right? No, he's not. That's what he protects. That's the whole point. Assad released ISIS operatives from the jail. Assad sent them across the borders to Iraq to kill Americans. Assad knew the GPS headquarters in Raqqa. And instead of bombarding them, he was bombarded, bombarding uh, bread lines, schools, hospitals, civilians, elementary schools. He knew their, you know, it's, their location in Raqqa never bombarded them. He got the oil from them, and he... And they still won't let him in to see the gas attack. You know, they can't yeah, do exactly. Small. So we have one last question, okay, and I want to make sure Bill Edwards... The information. Bill okay. Edwards had one question. Yes. Was like, uh, I'm, I'm here. My name is Bill Edwards. Right. Uh, and uh, there's a, uh, there's a uh, bill that's a uh, um, uh, reform bill for the Dodd Frank Part of that bill is a, a small section that includes the one another Republican uh, uh, George. Are you in the banking here. business? It takes away the technology. I used to be. I was in the business for, from 2000, from 1993 to 2013. Okay. I, it was probably the largest federal lender in the United States. Good. We did about 400,000 loans and about $60 billion worth of veteran loans. We're in the back to 50,000, 75,000. We're right. about 250,000. This program is is, is is there's nothing wrong with it, it's no problem, yet they're doing away with it because Jay May, who are the end user of these loans and uh, is a for profit government agency that provided to the Treasury last year about two point five billion dollars from these types of loans, has decided and I've been in business for twenty five years so I know and I'm not in the now I'm just an advocate for veterans. Uh, but, but in the bill they're getting into the in the, the, the bill, they're removing such regulation on, rules, on the bill that takes away the regulations, putting such regulations in there, it's going to eliminate the streamlining parole program, which is the 
refinance program where you can lower your interest rate without having appraisals or surveys and so forth. As long as you're, you're in, you know, current with your mortgage, that's all you need to do to be able to get that done and then the costs are allowed to be rolled in and this limits on the cost. It's the most effective program on the planet. As far so, as Pete, what are you, you know, looking at, you know, the you know, in, in, in fact, Mr. President, I did know, because as you know, I see every piece of legislation through the Rules Committee, I was unaware of this. I told Bill, and Bill and Jeff have been friends for many, many years, they helped our party, your party, your candidates for years. I told Bill, you do need to talk to the President about it, and I will get with the President. Why don't you look at it? Look I will, at it. and I will get back to you this week. You know, you have great guys working on that bill, and Henselling is, you know, like, you know, maybe he'd be open to it. I don't know. Senate. I'm so surprised because it's really just the opposite. Where's the problem? The Senate or in the House? The Senate. I think the Senate passed. The Senate. What happens is the Senate sent a bill with several pieces that were bad. As with everything, Mr. President, you've learned how this works. If you get it, if you get a document from the Senate and it passes, the Democrats got something in there. That so I need to look at that, and I will have it. You're checking it out? Yes, sir. Good. Let me know. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you all you. for coming. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Brian. Brian Ballard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.